Okay. Hi, everybody. Um, I'm sorry I couldn't come to school today, but I have jury duty, so I am going to be with you through this, through Canvas. Um, so what you're going to be doing today is you're going to be reading this case study, and I'm going to be reading it out loud. So if you want to follow along with me, that's fine. If you want to read it all by yourself without me, that's fine too. What I'll be doing is reading the whole case study and going through the questions with you. So you are going to do the case study, answer the questions embedded in the reading, and then you're going to do vocabulary. There are 10 words which I would like you to look up. I would like you to Google the words, find the definitions, write them in your notebook, and then take a picture of the vocabulary with the definitions, with the pictures, upload it into Canvas. This is all due today. You have plenty of time. Okay, so um, the case study. Okay, I'm going to follow, follow along with me. The title is called Those Old Kentucky Blues, An Interrupted Case Study. This is by Celeste Leander from the Department of Botany and Zoology at the British, uh, University of British Columbia and Robert Husky from the Department of Biology at the University of Virginia. Okay, part one, blue people. Ruth had never been so as astounded as she was the day she encountered the first of the blue people from Troublesome Creek. The blue woman simply walked into the rural health clinic where Ruth was a nurse. Ruth suspected the woman was having a heart attack, but the woman wasn't concerned at all. Oh, I'm just one of those blue Combses, she explained to Ruth, as if it was all perfectly logical. And my mother-in-law, she's a fugate. As her conversation continued, R Ruth learned from her patient that there were, in fact, many blue people living in an isolated community around Troublesome Creek. So here are the questions. Question number one, why might these people be blue? I would like you to generate two hypotheses about why some people are blue. And then I want you to write down how you can test those hypotheses. So let me give you an example. One hypothesis could be that these people are cold and maybe that's why they're blue. And the way to test that would be put them in the warm and see if they stay blue or if they go back to normal color. Okay, so uh, pause your video. Write down your two hypotheses and how you would test those hypotheses in the space provided below. Okay, part two, pieces of the family puzzle. So began an adventure that lasted nearly a decade. Ruth and a physician, Dr. Cowween, who had heard rumors of the blue people in the region, spent the next summer fighting off bugs and dogs as they trudged through the region, piercing together, piecing together a family tree of the reclusive fugates a large clan living in the valleys and hollows of the Appalachian Mountains in eastern Kentucky. Several of the relationships that Ruth and Dr. Cowing established have since been challenged by modern-day descendants of Martin Fugate. Nevertheless, the major lineages that they were able to establish helped to answer some of Ruth's questions. The Fugate clan in the Troublesome Creek region could be traced back to the arrival of Martin Fugate, an orphan from France in 1920. Legend has it that Martin may have been blue, but reports vary. For this case, we'll assume that Martin is blue. Martin settled in the area and married the pale, red-headed Elizabeth Smith. Over the years, they had seven children. Four of them reportedly were blue. Zachary, one of the Martin and Elizabeth's blue sons, married Elizabeth's sister. Because of the isolation in the region, it was not uncommon to simply marry someone from next door. As the generations passed, this led to sometimes marrying a cousin or other relative as the family continued to grow. Yikes. They had several children. One of their sons, Le Levi, was Levi. Levi married a girl from the Ritchie clan, another predominant family in the region. Together, they had eight children, including Luna. Luna is legendary for having had nearly purple skin. Luna was courted by and married John Stacy. Together they raised 13 children. None of them were blue. One of Luna and John's children had a son, Alvy Stacy. Alva had, and his wife, Hilda, came from separate branches of an extensive clan. Alva remembered his maternal gr blue grandmother and also tells the story of his infant son, Ben, who had caused quite the stir at the hospital when he was born with a blue tinge. Ben's blue color faded soon after birth and he now reports only his fingernails and lips turn blue sometimes. Ben had since gone to graduate to graduate from the Eastern Kentucky University in Richmond, Kentucky. He married soon after graduation and moved to another state. 
Okay, questions. Number one, construct a family tree, a pedigree of the information provided. Evaluate the pedigree, and can you decide Can you decide if blueness is actually a heritable trait? So does it go from one generation to another? If so, what pattern of inheritance do you suspect? Is it dominant or recessive? If not, what other hypotheses might you expect? Explain your answer. Okay, then I want you to provide allele designations for each person in the pedigree, which means their genotype. So I want you to pause the video and do your pedigree just like you did yesterday and provide genotypes for all the people. Okay, part three, a different shade of blue. The mutation you have evaluated is located in a gene that codes for an enzyme called NADH. Um, it is found in a large concentration in red blood cells where the enzyme functions to return hemoglobin to a normal oxygen binding state after it has been oxidized to methoglobin. Methoglobin cannot bind oxygen or carbon dioxide because iron, the oxygen binding part of heme, is the ferric state which binds the water instead of oxygen and gives the, blue, the blood a blue tint. So there's a mutation in the protein that causes the blood to look blue instead of red. This oxidation process is slow, but requires enzyme mediation and reduction to return to the hemoglobin as shown below in figure one. So on the left, you can see here is the normal hemoglobin. And sometimes in the presence of oxygen, the hemoglobin will turn blue if you have this mutation. Okay, in the graph below in figure two shows the enzyme activity over time in people that are blue. People that are not blue, but have blue children and people that are not blue and never had blue children. So here it shows um, a graph and you have the unreduced um, hemoglobin and then time. And so let's see, you have people that are blue have a high concentration of this unreduced hemoglobin. People who are parents of blue people have a medium amount of unreduced hemoglobin and the normal people have low amounts of unreduced hemoglobin. Okay, so what this means is that um, you have to have both alleles of the unreduced hemoglobin to have the disorder, which would be a recessive disorder. Okay, so here are the questions. Number one, what are the three lines of the graph in figure two telling us? Number two, provide genotype designations for each line in the graph in figure two. After evaluating the data above, what can you say regarding patterns of inheritance for this scenario? Number four, compare your conclusions of pattern of inheritance to those from part two. Is one perspective more correct than the other? Okay, so here it's showing you that this top line means you have to have two alleles with the hemoglobin unreduced mutation. So that means like little b, little b. Here, you only have one allele, so it's gonna be big B, little b, and this line is gonna represent the big B, big B. Okay, and then, so what I would like you to do is which data, your pedigree or this graph, is better at showing you the type of inheritance. So you decide, and I want you to write that for number three, and then for number four, compare the conclusions from, oh, that's what you're, okay, so compare the conclusions from your pedigree versus this, and do they match, and they should, and then you're done. Okay, so what you're gonna do now is you're gonna stop the video and you're gonna do your vocabulary for the rest of the class period. Please be nice and quiet for the sub, and I miss all of you already, and I want you to have a really fantastic Thanksgiving break, and I will see you on Monday when we get back. Okay, I'll see you later. Bye-bye.